Hey gang, before we go any further today, let me tell you about one of my other favorite marketing podcasts. I think you're really going to enjoy. Believe it or not, it's a fun and funny podcast about email marketing. It's called The Email Marketing Show. They recently did an amazing episode called Six Lies Your Email Marketing Platform is Telling You, which I loved because these guys are so genuine and real in their opinions about what's working and what doesn't in email marketing today. You should definitely check them out by finding The Email Marketing Show wherever you get your podcasts or at emailmarketingheroes.com. This podcast is coming to you on MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. There's another show on MPN you might enjoy as well. I'm Jonathan Gaby, host of Marketing Distilled. Each episode, I distill what I have learned and observed in the marketing space and talk with industry leaders like me to help you in your work. Subscribe to Marketing Distilled today. It'll make your marketing that much smarter. Just search for Marketing Distilled wherever you get your podcasts. On this episode of Winfluence, I hope that one day agencies don't need a gauge. I hope they don't need to turn to you because I think what would really close the gap and solve the problem is if ad agencies and brands had accurate representation for these communities within their organizations so they didn't have to ask. I agree with you, but what, what we're seeing is that it's actually diverse leaders within these organizations that use this tool the most, right? Because they're tired of being relied on to like speak for an entire community. <laughs> There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Can you think of a brand that has done something in marketing in the last few years, not just with influencers, but marketing overall, and they've immediately had to put out the fires of a PR crisis because their campaign was culturally insensitive? I mean, how can you not think of a few? From L'Oreal to Amazon to Disney, some of the biggest brands, and certainly even small businesses, have either been disingenuous supporting efforts like Black Lives Matter or Pride, or have gone to far worse extremes like some brands being accused of stealing ideas or designs from minority creators or businesses. The problem in these circumstances is typically the lack of diversity and inclusivity at the decision-making level. That means white people are making decisions about non-white cultural themes. Not smart. While the solution is certainly to drive more diversity and inclusivity at all levels of brands and the agencies that serve them, that won't happen overnight. There has to be an interim solution to help brands and agencies better understand the communities they're trying to serve. Well, now there is. And it underlines a major theme in our thesis and discussion of influence marketing. Joshua Dubois is the CEO of Gage, a research and insights platform of sorts that allows agencies and brands to tap into cultural and community leaders to better understand the communities and cultures they represent. Need a focus group of thoughtful African-American thought leaders to gut check your latest ad campaign? You can find that on Gage. While that is astonishing and much needed, what's more interesting to me, however, is the treatment of influence in Gage's approach. It's not an app where you can filter and search for influencers, those with big online social media followings. It's an app where you can find people who actually influence communities. Civic leaders, journalists, academicians, activists, these are the influencers Dubois has collected in Gage. He joined me last week to talk more about the platform and the concept of influence versus influencers. He should know the difference for sure. Dubois served as the executive director of the White House's Office of Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships in the Obama administration. He also authored the best-selling book of President Obama's devotionals. More impressively to me, however, Dubois has been recognized by The Root and Ebony Magazine as one of the most influential African-American leaders in the country. Needless to say, it is an honor to have him here. We also tended to my own personal journey of understanding the African-American experience, which I think you should hear. My journey has unlocked a lot of growth for me. I hope it can for you, too. Joshua Dubois and Influential People versus Influencers is on today's episode. Before we get to that, I want to make sure you have downloaded that great resource Storyblock has published to make you smarter. It's a new report called The State of Content Management. It's a very useful survey of 515 businesses in the U.S. and Europe, companies just like yours. 
and how they are approaching content distribution through their digital channels in 2022. Think about it, folks. You have to provide content for your website. Maybe you also have a mobile app. Then there's e-commerce platforms, yours and others. Voice-activated speakers. Managing content today is more complex than ever. Get insights and ideas on how companies like yours are tackling the content challenge with the State of Content Management Report from Storyblock. Just go to storyblock.com slash winfluence for your free report. That storyblock without the C, S-T-O-R-Y-B-L-O-K dot com slash winfluence. And stick around after the discussion today, too, especially if you want a big discount code to the Influencer Marketing Show in New York City, April 27th. Get ready to find out how brands can be more culturally insightful and how influence trumps influencers. Joshua Dubois of Gage is next on Winfluence. Hey, gang, I've got something really cool for you. Time and place is everything, especially in marketing. But in today's age of a million messages per minute, not enough hours in a day, how do you really get your target audience's attention? Well, I do it with LinkedIn advertising. They have targeting tools that allow me to reach my precise audience down to their job title, company name, location, and more. That means my ads are being seen by those who matter. Yours can too. LinkedIn advertising helps you speak to the right people at the right time. Stand out against your competitors while nurturing customer relationships relationships and growing your brand. Scale your marketing and grow your business with LinkedIn advertising. LinkedIn is offering a $100 credit on your next campaign just for listening to the Marketing Podcast Network. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim that credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Joshua, it's a really great pleasure to have you here. We, we keep coming back to the topic of inclusivity and influencer marketing, largely because of the influencer pay gap between gender and race. But it's exciting to expand this conversation when we can to more of what brands and influencers can do to make our work and our world better. But I want the audience to follow along with me here today, because for those of you listening, Joshua isn't here because of influencer marketing. He's here because of influence. And we've discussed here that there's a difference between an influencer and someone with influence. Winfluence, as it were, is about focusing on the latter, not the former. And Joshua works in the latter for sure. So Joshua, tell us how you intersect with influencers, knowing that our definition of that is far broader than people with a lot of social media followers. Yeah, broader and more nuanced. Well, Jason, it's really an honor to be on with you. Um, My name is Joshua Dubois, and I'm the CEO of Gage. Our website is gage.ai. And we are a fun platform, Jason, that um, that allows brand leaders – you know, from CVS Health and Target and Snapchat and Pinterest and a bunch of other um, of our subscribers to to, um, benefit from the wisdom of really thoughtful cultural leaders every day. So it's basically a software platform where folks log on and they test their strategic questions, their ad copy, their um, content and more um, with people that really know communities well, whether it's the African-American community or the LGBTQ community or the conservative community or business leaders or what have you. Um, They they get rapid and confidential feedback from people that have a nuanced understanding of a particular community. And so it's not just influencers. Influencers are important, but it's also people with um, a deep knowledge of of offline communities, civic leaders, folks who are journalists and who have spent their careers understanding a particular space. We assemble those people and then connect them to brands. That's really amazing. And some of the case studies we've used on this show to talk about true influence versus influencers touch on those audiences, journalists, uh, civic leaders, community leaders. So I think for for the influence marketer out there listening, uh, or even the influencer who is really interested in this, uh, I think one question they might have is, okay, if I am looking for quote unquote influencers, I go to a software package, I type in some capabilities and some filters and whatnot, and it says, blah, here's people online who have followers that fit that. How do you identify people offline, people who have the true influence and impact on those communities? Yeah, there are both some automated and manual ways. On the automated side, we have algorithms that look at things like your appearance in Google News results or on an organizational website, right? Like you're the vice president of a particular civic organization that has um, an understanding or knowledge of a of a space. Um, appearance in a Wikipedia entry about a subject matter and so forth. And so we're 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 always looking and kind of scraping for things like that. Keywords in a LinkedIn profile that indicate that you have a knowledge of a particular space. But then on the manual side. We work with those who are already on our platform and ask them, 
who are really smart people in your circles? Who are people that are doing it right? Who you know have a, have built up a deep understanding of a particular um, demographic or psychographic? Who other people are listening to? Um, and, and we ask them to to bring those uh, folks in their community into our platform as well. It's been working. We have over twelve thousand really bright and dynamic thought leaders regularly responding. I mean, engaging with brands every day on our on our next lab platform. Um, and uh, and yeah, so it's it's both automated and manual. I'm kind of reading the tea leaves here a little bit on what Gage is and and how it functions and whatnot. But I want to ask this question because I think this will open up the audience's eyes to the tea leaves I'm looking at. I want to know who once said in your presence out loud, "I wish I had an app that would help my brand understand cultural trends and attitudes, so I can keep can stop stepping in it with my consumers." Who said that? <laughs> Well, that's a good question. So it's interesting. This started with our work um, doing community outreach and marketing from an agency perspective, separate, but, but before we, we launched this, um, this, this software tool. So um, I also run the country's uh, one, largest black owned social impact firm, one of the largest social impact um, firms in um, the country overall. And we've worked with, you know, everyone from Procter and Gamble to, um, a and E networks and MGM and, and a bunch of others helping them build and run their social impact campaigns. It was in the course of that work that we realized we saw brands that were just step stepping in it, honestly, right? They were launching um, ads out into the world that were getting panned or they weren't getting any notice at all. And we were trying to figure out why did this keep happening? We realized it was because of the way they were doing their market research. They had a, they had great tools that allowed them to check in with um, with everyday consumers, which is really important. But there were no tools that allowed them to talk to people who really understood a community well, right, who really um, had, had a deep knowledge of what is going to trend or what's going to um, become a problem for you. Um, and, and there was just nothing that assembled those types of leaders. And so we thought there's a space for us to build that out. There's a space for us to use software to connect brands to really smart people um, to help them avoid big problems and mistakes, but more importantly, to take advantage of opportunities. And so there wasn't just one person. Person that, that said, um, you know, we need something in this space, but it was sort of us seeing the landscape and realizing that nothing like this existed. So I want to take what you've explained, Gage, uh, and the next level, next level platform to be and put it into more of a reality of this is how it works, because I understand yeah. reaching out to community leaders and, you know, people in, in different you know segments and talking to them and getting, you know, mining them for insights. But I want to make sure that people out there understand how that translates to a campaign or, or yep. a brand thing. So I know that when uh, Snapchat, I think, came out with a, you know, their their quest to build a camera designed to serve all skin tones. I remember when that first popped and I started seeing media coverage of it. I was like, wow, that's really interesting. Um, how did Gage fit into de the development of that effort? Absolutely. So we're, we're really proud of our work with Snap and they're doing some really innovative things. We fit in at a few key points along that journey. So first, with the initial idea, should we do this, right? Is this a good thing? And what are your expectations if we do this? And so we, um, we will, we'll work with a company like Snap and worked with Snap to ask thought leaders um, in, in that space that they're ultimately trying to reach among sort of diverse leaders, people that are focused on inclusivity, is this something that we should do, right? And, and if we do do it, what should we be thinking about? What are the um, opportunities and what are the watch outs? So that's stage one. And then they actually start testing the actual tool itself with these folks, right? You know, um, is, is, is it working for you? Um, what, where, where is it most effective? What are some gaps? So in the product development process. And then the final stage as well, right before you roll it out, it's okay, any, any final things, any final concerns, right? Or before we put this out into the world. And so it's at each one of those places, um, Leaders from Snap either log on to our platform or reach out to their account exec and say, okay, we want to do another test. Let's go back out into the world. And then we return feedback from this community of really smart, thoughtful people really, really quickly. These, these thought leaders are walking around with an app on their phone, their Gage app. And so they're responding you know, in real time almost, and we're turning that um, into research reports. And so that's how it works, kind of at each stage of the process. Same thing with Sephora. They, they had an ad campaign um, that they ran last year called Black Beauty is Beauty. Beauty. It was one of the most important campaigns that they did. They we tested the idea and then the storyboard and then the almost final stage copy. And so it was kind of all along the journey um, is where we come in and, and give them feedback. 
That's fantastic. Well, I, I, I don't mean to destroy your business bottle, but I hope, <laughs> I hope that one day agencies don't need a gauge. I hope they don't need to turn to you because I think what would really close the gap and solve the problem is if ad agencies and brands had accurate representation for these communities within their organizations. So they didn't have to ask, although that doesn't remove the need for, you know, consumer research and market insights and all that good yeah. stuff. But it, it's a great point, Jason. And the one thing I'll say, because I, I, I agree with you, but what, what we're seeing is that it's actually diverse leaders within these organizations that use this tool the most, right? Yeah. Because they're tired of being relied on to like speak for an entire community, right? Like, you know, they, they, um, they, we, we, we've seen, particularly over the last couple of years, a disproportionate weight um, put on internal um, in, internal stakeholders just because they, you know, come from a particular background or, or background or, or speak to a particular um, community. And so they're saying, "Hey, we want a tool that can help you broaden the lens, that can get more perspectives in." Um, and so they've been among the biggest drivers of of, of, of interest in our product. So I assume this type of platform is an enterprise solution. Who's your ideal customer, which is my you know backhanded way of saying what size business can afford this? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so, so far it's been uh, the CMO shop, including CMOs directly and folks that report to them, chief communications officers as well, and people that are uh, either leading DEI for a company or in that space. Ultimately, people that are responsible if something um, goes really wrong related to inclusivity or, um, or the people who really, really want to get it right. And so that's kind of been the space that, um, that, that we're in. Now, we have solutions for all different levels of organizations. Our primary one is sort of an enterprise solution that major brands, again, CVS Health, Target, Snap, Pinterest, and a bunch of others are, are using. We, we have tools for the publishing industry that we're rolling out that's kind of a lower price point, a smaller group of respondents on any given survey, but that you can use all the time when you're you know putting new books or new articles out um, in, into the world. Um, we, we're expanding more into the entertainment space, which is a little different you know, testing movies over and over mm-hmm. again um, at, a, at a slightly different um, different level than what brands are doing. And so I'd encourage folks to reach out. Um, you can you can request a demo at gauge.ai and, you know, we can talk about how our solution may work for you. Excellent. So uh, forgive me here for diving into a deeper question, but I, I've been on a personal journey since I was probably, you know, teenager, uh, but it's intensified as I've gotten older, becoming a parent and all that good good stuff that it's a journey though, from the perspective of obviously, well, it's obvious to you. It may not be obvious to everybody listening, but I'm a middle-class white male, um, you know, but my mission has been to understand more about the African-American experience because racism and, and all of its awful tentacles like weighs on me personally sometimes. And it was very difficult for me to, but I'm glad I did come to the realization that institutional racism has produced biases and prejudices in me. So I own part of this, even if my intention was never on the other side of that. But in your conversations and experiences, because you're dealing with people who are talking about these issues every day, I'd love to know, how do you explain the 21st century African-American experience to people who have no clue how pervasive the uphill battle and struggle for equality and dignity as a person of color actually is? How do you explain that? Thank you for the question. It's a great one. You know, the first thing I would say, because this is such a charged, fraught area, is throw out the buzzwords, right? Not you, but in general. Like, let's not worry about critical race theory or whatever. Let's come back to our own stories, the communities that we live and work in and the spaces that that we we just navigate every day in our story as a country, right? Like the reality, the real history, not anything that anyone's trying to put upon you or um, convince you of. Let's just get down to the basis of truth. Um, And when you look at that truth, it's a very complex truth, right? With a lot of beauty, but a lot of really tough stuff as well, right? Um, From the founding of our country and the clarion call for democracy that that founding was and is around the world, but also the fact that from 1619 until the mid 1800s, it was legal to own people, right? And people yeah. were owned, right? And, and and then we fought a big war. Um, things were looking up for a little bit, but then there was a massive backlash um, in, um, in, in response to that. Um, and people who were African-American in this country were subjugated all the way up until the middle of the 20th century, right? So there was just a really, really long 
period where um, we were navigating some really tough stuff and, and just a much shorter period where we're starting to figure it out. Of course, we haven't figured it out with that history. Of course, we haven't figured it out. Right. And so and so then now you think about the end of yourself as an individual, myself, yourself and others. You ask yourself the question, how have how has that story impacted my story? And it's impacted everybody's story. Um, for, for me, um, I, you know, I had um, people in my direct family lineage who were enslaved, right? And then in the you know early part of the 20th century who could not own property, right? And, and couldn't get access to the best you know jobs. My great grandmother, Ola Mae Webb in Nashville, Tennessee, um, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant woman, um, died um, uh, two years ago at the age of 96. But she was lim- her her career options were very much limited. She was uh you know had um was was a maid most of her life. Not that there's anything wrong with that, um, but because of who she was and the time that she lived in, and and some of that passes it impacts me right. It impacts the wealth that my family was able to build, the opportunities um that they were able to have, and so forth. I also have other privileges too, right? I've, I I I I live in a, a wonderful home with three beautiful babies and a great wife, and um, and I've had op- certain opportunities come my way as well. So my picture is complicated. And I would say for white Americans and others, how does that picture impact you? How does that story impact you? Did 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 it give you access to certain benefits? Does it make life completely easy? No, of course it doesn't, right? So I, I think we got to get past the buzzwords, past the the narratives. And just study history and then think about it. Mm-hmm. Just pause and think. How did that impact me? How does it not impact me? And then bring that that honesty, that truth of our stories um, to the relationships that we have in our life. So I'm, I'm sorry, it's not a simple solution, but that's kind of how I tend to approach things. <laughs> well, I never assume it's ever going to be a simple solution, but I, I appreciate your your answer. I've I've only recently, after years of learning and contemplation, only recently have I started to I think fully grasp the world as it is for people who are not like me. So I hope that. And the rest of what we've talked about today helps others get closer to that as well. So thank you for that. Of course. Um, if you want to know more about Gage, uh, if we want to know more about Gage or you, where do they find you on the interwebs? Sure. Go to gauge.ai. Um, on that page near the top, there's a great little short video, about 80 seconds, that explains our platform. You can also read about us a bunch in the news. We're really honored that a lot of folks have taken the time to to tell our story in, in, in public places like the Washington Post and um, insider intelligence and Bloomberg and elsewhere. So that's all on our website at gauge.ai. You can sign up to be one of our gaugers. Those are the thought leaders and influencers that respond on our platform. You can share your wisdom and make a lot of money at the same time. Um, and at, on the flip side, if you're a brand that wants to use this, you can schedule a demo again at gauge.ai. Awesome. Joshua Dubois, thank you so much for the conversation and your work to make the world better, my friend. I appreciate you being here. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate you. One last thing today, folks, the Influencer Marketing Show is fast approaching. It is in New York City on April 27th. I have a discount code for you to get tickets to join me there. So get out a pen and paper or get that URL bar ready if you have your phone or your computer handy. The Influencer Marketing Show is held in North America for the first time this year. It's a one-day event in New York City, just off Broadway at the New World Stages on West 50th. It will be Wednesday, April 27th. Coming up in just a couple of weeks, I will be chairing one of the stages as well as moderating a panel featuring Pete Kennedy from Tagger, the presenting sponsor of this podcast, and Jenny Heinrich, who leads influencer marketing strategy for Ketchum, one of the Omnicom companies. It's going to be a fun discussion. Go see the full speaker and topic lineup and get your ticket at jason.online slash IMS Falls. That's jason.online slash IMS Falls. And when you check out, use the code FALLS, all caps, F A L L. S and get a 15% discount just for listening to influence jason.online slash IMS falls. Don't forget to drop us a rating or a review on your favorite podcast app. If you'd like a deeper dive on influencer marketing topics every so often, subscribe to my companion newsletter at jason.online slash subscribe. I send it every four to six weeks and go deep on a topic to make your influence marketing smarter. Want to help make a future episode of Influence Awesome? Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Record a voice memo and send it via email, or you can just send a regular email to jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your comment on a future episode or your question to inspire a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Influence the Book as a thank you. 
Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter, or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. I'm Ian Truscott here to tell you about Rockstar CMO FM. The M is the marketing and the F is the well you decide. As you wonder, does the world need another effing marketing podcast? Find out as every week I chat with friends old and new that I've met through my career from techie to CMO and share a tune, a cocktail and their marketing street knowledge. Just drop a dime into your podcasting jukebox and jive along with Rockstar CMO FM. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.